As you can see, there's a Model T there, and there's some tracks, and then it's not a good picture. Some of these pictures, I just wanted you to see them, because some of the books, I have to take it out of books. It's not like this stuff's you know, readily available. And, um, almost every book I look at, somebody has a different uh, date or number. So <coughs> someone says, oh, there was 200, and it's 500, and we'll see it is. <laughs> so basically, he had done some of the heavier stuff, but this first snowmobile had a two and a half plus outboard motor, and he put a little piece of a uh, Model T outboard radiator, a couple of bicycle sprockets, and a conveyor from you know those grain conveyors that would put uh, hay up to the vines. He put that down on the ground and put uh, some cloth on there and some cleats and uh, put two skis for his feet and two wooden skis with a rope and put a board on top and he sat on it. The only problem is it was direct drive. So what he did is he had the back picked up with a lever and he'd start the thing up and the track would turn and he just dropped it and <laughs> off it would go. And, uh, and it actually did go. And uh, so his buddy says, hey, you know, you ought to patent this. This is, you know, this, you got an idea here. So he decided to do a patent in 1927, and uh, this was in Sanger, Wisconsin. Um, and from 1924 to 39, he had built like 40 machines, and uh, no three were alike. I mean, there was no uh, rhyme or reason he'd build one, and they went all over the place. People just, you know, there really was no records where they went. Um, but he had two engines that he used, and he used a two-cylinder, it was a motorcycle engine called a Celsius. They had a Celsius motorcycle, and that was a two-seater. And then he had a four-cylinder that had a Henderson motorcycle engine. And remember, this thing's just a toboggan. It's a wooden toboggan. You got a, you know, a motorcycle engine. So now you've got to be able to shift it, drive it, do the clutch, and hang on. And so it was quite a, and it weighed about 600 pounds. <laughs> so basically, like I said, he had built his first 40, he had nine employees, and uh, in 1939, a company out of Finland uh, came up to him and wanted 200 machines, and he's like saying, what am I going to do? He says, I have nine employees, I've been building these in the back of my, <coughs> back of my store, well, there was a company nearby, and uh, it was called Foil Drive Company, FWD. And Carl made a deal with them, and what he did was he gave them the name, the, all the rights, you know, the models, and he remained the prime consultant. And for this, he got 2%. That's all he got was 2%. So from 1940 to 46, they moved to Clintonville. And, uh, in Clintonville, from those four years, they started with the Model A, which was basically they just copied the machine that he had. But at that time, they started with the Indian motorcycle mm. engine. And that had a, the, the big thing with that was the transmission was part of the motor. So they didn't have the, the motor, the transmission, and all these parts so that made the, the machine a little lighter and brought down the price. and. Well, here it is now. The war is starting. So, so at that time, they were building a few other models, and there was one that they called uh, model. Well, they had a model B and A, a B and a C. The C had a 10-gallon tank to go, you know, obviously longer places, and the military one was was called a model. I'm trying to think. Doesn't matter. But they built 150 of them. They were all white. And it shows here, you know, that these are ice caves and they're coming out of the ice caves. And luring up in the limestone at that Air Force base, they had four of them. And uh, there's one right now at the Patton Museum that you could actually see it. And a friend of ours, Camp Bells up in Millinocca, has one. There's two of them. Just we don't know where they are. But they were all white, and they did things like covering the front so the snow wouldn't get on it. And 
There's actually a story, because remember during World War II, we, we were with the Russians. We weren't fighting the Russians. They were one of our allies. And they came to FWD and tried and went out on the river. And there was a library that had a machine gun. I guess it was just with display. And they actually mounted it on the front and drove up and down the river and made believe that they were spraying bullets to see if that would work. It doesn't say anywhere as if they bought any. Because uh, between all the units that were bought during the war, the serial numbers stopped. And then after that, they started back up. And so after the war, pretty much production slowed down. So they started building them for like up in northern, northern Canada, or to the Yukon, what have you. And doctors used them. They used them for rangers, utility companies, mail carriers, trappers, and uh, so things were slowing down. And by then, also, the four-wheel drive company was slowing down their vehicles. So they moved uh, again in 1947 to Kentner, Ontario. And uh, these here are just some more of the models, that the three models that they had built in Wisconsin. And uh, this was the first brochure by FWD, and this one here had the 10-gallon tank. And uh, then in, in Clinton, Wisconsin, from 40 to 46, like I just explained, that's they built most of them from the military. And this was their first brochure <coughs> that they ever made. And uh, they, you know, they made them as long as from two seaters. I'd seen some pictures with five people on it. This model right here is, is was basically the last model they ever built. It's Indian powered. And it's a Model D. They built it from '47 to 1951. This one is actually mine. I don't have it yet. It's on its way. <laughs> I says, you know what museum? Snow Museum has to have the first device. And so in June, that'll be at the museum. And the guy sent me a picture. I kind of want a little more of it. But, uh, <laughs> so basically, from 47 to 51, that's all they built for those. And then 51 to 53, they came out with a different model. And if anybody's familiar with Polaris, the old red Polaris's, they look very similar to this, even though the first Polaris's weren't copied. Um, it really helped because in 1955, their patents were expiring. So when Polaris started getting into it, there was no problem with the patents. But the problem was in 1960s, Skidoo would come out with their first tin cab yellow Skidoo. It, was a, you know, it looks like you know, it had a small engine, a rubber track. And so the little yellow Skidoo was really more for a sports machine for everybody. So at, at that time, you know, they just uh, they, had, they decided to sell, and they sold to Carter Brothers. And they built a license for one more year. And the problem with when the license, if you want to restore one, the company who bought it scrapped all the parts. So trying to restore one is almost impossible. So there was 39 years of Eliza, and they sold in 20 states. They sold them in every Canadian province, and Yukon, Argentina, Iceland, Finland. The final series were called the K-series. And uh, basically, they made two models. They made three, a K-8, a K-10, 